Guess what? We have our own congregation app. I love it. It's helping so many people to stay connected. That's the key, to stay connected. When you're connected, you get more committed. From sermons, to scriptures, to devotions, it's all going to help you. The Congregation Family app, you need it right there on your phone. It's gonna help you stay connected and committed. And guess what? That leads to a better life. Hi guys, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we have midweek. What is midweek? Midweek is this incredible time where we get to hang out together as a church online. And our goal is to build you up midway in the week. So you're gonna enjoy fantastic messages from me, Pastor Tim, Pastor Paige, Joseph Mendoza. It's absolutely fantastic. You do not wanna miss it. So join us every week. Sundays are fantastic, but do not forget Wednesdays, 7 p.m. We will see you there. If God is doing something great, I wanna be right in the middle of it. The vision fun, it's the Jesus style. Our vision is to set people free, to be Jesus to somebody who needs Jesus, to have their lives changed. Get involved today in the Vision Fund and help us change people's lives. Good morning, congregation family. I'm LaVonda Bryant, and I am the coordinator for our Gather Small Group Ministry. And you know, there's no better way to bring people together than in gathering in a small group setting. Here at the Congregation Family, we believe that God created us to live in relationship with others. And only then can we live the full life He intended for us. That's why gatherings exist, to make these life-changing relationships relevant and accessible to all of us. So, if you're interested in being a group leader, we have signups today after service in the lobby. See you there. April 17th, Sunday is Easter. Mark your calendar. Easter comes only once a year. <laughs> Congregation family, we're gonna have an amazing Easter service you do not want to miss. So mark your calendar, a great Easter message will be spoken, and also we will be talking about life-changing principles that will catapult you into an even better year. Mark your calendars, Easter is coming. Hello everyone, I'd like to invite all the ladies to our next event, May 14th. I'm Pastor Paige, we give incredible events. You do not want to miss this. It's going to be at the Alta Vista Country Club. We go first class. Everyone who's been to any of our events, you understand. We do not waste any amount of class for you ladies. So come on out again, May 14th. All the information is there. You want to invite all your friends. You want to invite your family. You want to, and we probably will even have all the little girls come as well. All the children will be invited. So don't miss it. We're going to build community. We're going to support each other. See you there. Welcome kids. It's Miss Fredolin, the children director. I'm so excited you can join us this Sunday because guess what? We have a great worship coming up. So if you're just waking up and you may have those eye boogers, let's wipe them off and let's literally jump off our couch. Don't jump on the couch, but jump off your couch and tune in for worship and let's get all the wiggles out. Good morning, congregation family. It is so good to be here with all of you this morning. So I'm gonna invite all of you to stand up because we have a lot to praise Jesus for today, amen? First off, I just want to say God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And this month, we're getting into Easter month, amen? We're getting into celebrating Jesus and what he did for all of us. So let's just go into worship this morning and praise the amazing King that our Heavenly Father is. All right, let's go.
God some praise this morning. Amen. So God was giving me a word this morning for all of you. Intimacy. God just wants to bring you into his chest and allow for you to find rest. It says in scripture, come all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy. So I'm just inviting you to come into that intimacy with him this morning. And I want to invite my brother Manny up here real quick because uh, when Jesus put this word in my heart, he really wanted me to share a testimony of someone who knows that intimacy, even when the deserts are dry. So for any of you who are joining us online and you're feeling discouraged, uh, let this be an encouragement to you this morning. So, Manny, can you just share with us a little bit about why you go into Jesus' presence? (laughs) Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? You know, Kelly asked me um, about my relationship with God and and asked me specifically when there's times when when there's um, there's a day-to-day and sometimes when you feel God, 
sometimes when you don't. And that does happen. Uh, it's a relationship. And, uh, and as we were talking, we were kind of sharing about, uh, about when Moses, and I was saying when Moses went before God and when, he, uh, when God called him and he saw the burning bush, when he went there, he was like, hey, what is that light? So he went, of course, and then God spoke to him. You guys know the story. And he told him, Moses, remove your shoes because you're in holy ground. So at that point, that's like, it's a come to Jesus moment, right? It's like, oh my God, takes his sandals off, goes before God, and he tells him, he commissions him, right? And he tells him, you're going to be the deliverer, right? But as time goes on, God does use him, and he does the miraculous, and does exactly what, uh, what God told him, and Moses did it. But there was also times when there was a gap where he was in the desert and, you know, and all the people complained, the children of Israel complained because, you know, they didn't see God, they didn't feel him. Just like the sun consistently shines, but when it's cloudy, you know, it gets a little gloomy and it gets a little dark. But is the sun still there? Absolutely. Of course it is. And see, with our relationship with God, it's like that too. We always have that, and there's moments when it's a, oh, my God, it's a come to Jesus moment. You know, Michelle and I, we, we, uh, we have what we call God wings. So when God shows you something specifically, specifically, that is you, you have that one little thing that God says, I love you. I'm here for you. And that's the beauty about how God is with us, because he knows us specifically. He knows how many hairs we have on our head. I think I said that once before. Some of us had a, have a lot, and some of us don't have that many. <laughs> I'm not looking at Tim. I'm not looking at my brother. Over here. <laughs> but God knows us specifically how we are, how we we're growing, and how uh, our relationship is, and how much He loves us. Yes. And that's the cool thing about that. I think I took too much time already. But God is good, and He knows you all specifically. Every day we are going to go through some dry spells. But knowing that he is with us no matter what, no matter what, no matter when it's dry, he's there. Because he's going to give you the aha moments or the God winks that he lets you know, I'm with you. Keep going. Move forward. Press on. Okay. Is that good? I love you so much, Manny. Give God him a bless round you guys. of applause for sharing that. I'm going to introduce a new song this morning, but I promise it's easy. You'll pick it up real quick. I don't want anything but you. You're more than every dream come true. All of the things I've thought I wanted don't come close to knowing you. Now that I'm yours and the secret that I find I'll spend forever in the pleasure I found 
more time. Just give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. You can have all this
Kelly, I felt like moonwalking out here after that. <laughs> Good morning, congregation family. If you guys believe this morning that he can move mountains and break chains, yes. can we please give the Lord a huge round of applause? And also, let's give Kelly, Byron, and my great friend Manny a huge round of applause for our worship this morning. And uh, for those of you online, thank you for joining us. For those of you in person, you may be seated. And my name is Joseph Mendoza. I am the lead of our Family Strong ministry, and I am excited that you chose to join us at the Congregation Family this Sunday morning. For those of you online, please share because you care. Maybe give someone a fist bump wherever you're at. Let them know we're live. If you're driving in your car, look in your rearview mirror and say, gosh, I look great this morning. And for those of you in person, thank you for joining us. And uh, we are excited that you're with us. I have a lot of exciting announcements this morning. Okay, so bear with me. And uh, when there's a lot of announcements, that means there's exciting things going on at the congregation family. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for the exciting things that are yet to come here at the congregation family. So first I want to start with our Share Empowering Luncheon, which the graphic is right behind me. So shout out to Pastor Paige and the women's ministry team. And let me tell you, yes, give Pastor Paige and the women's ministry team a huge clap. And uh, I had the privilege to listen to the women's phone call and I got some behind the scenes sneak peek of what's gonna take place. And all I can say is, ladies, you are in for an amazing treat on Sunday, May 14th, 10 a.m. at the Alta Vista Country Club. And guess what? I've been talking about it for the past couple of weeks. Tickets are on sale today. You can see Miss Fredolin directly after service. She will be out in the foyer area to your left. She will be taking ticket. Uh, purchases and signups. So be sure, ladies, to stop by. And here's what I did here. And Kelly, I'm excited about this. I've heard that a couple women have already sponsored entire tables. Okay. So what's an entire table, Joseph? That's eight women sponsored. And to my understanding, there's three to four women that I've already know that have stepped up and done that. So if you're a lady, let's think about other women or ladies that we can invite. Let's do our part to invite more women to the Share Empowering Luncheon. Saturday, May 14th, tickets, early bird pricing, $45, okay? That'll be in effect until Thursday, March 31st. So ladies, be sure to get your early bird tickets this morning when you exit immediately after service. Now I'm excited. How many of you know that Easter Sunday is right around the corner? Easter Sunday already. So guess what? Come celebrate Easter with the congregation family. Sunday, April 17th, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here, you guys. And here's what I'm going to say. Let's bring some kids. If you don't know a kid, find a kid, invite a friend. Uh, have your kids invite kids because we are going to have an amazing Sunday for our children's ministry. And rumor has it there may be an Easter bunny hopping around somewhere here on the campus, you guys. So we have a lot of exciting things, not only for you in service, but for our children and children's ministry. So once again, here's what I'll say. Invite, invite, invite. Each one, reach one. Let's share because we care, okay? And for those of you online, come join us Sunday, Easter Sunday. That'll be April 17th at the Congregation Family. And I still have two more announcements, Kelly. And I have a big one coming up. I don't want to forget our prayer cards, you guys, that are right here in front of us. Uh, for those of you who maybe have not been here the past couple weeks, we have these blue connect cards right here that are beautifully done by Hannah and our media team. If you do not have a connect card, Danny is holding uh, some connect cards up, one of our amazing GQ ushers. And uh, what we want to do with these cards is we want to put our prayer request on here, you guys. And talking about Share Empowering Women's Luncheon and talking about Easter Sunday, what a great time to believe that a miracle will happen and that somebody in your life, a family, a friend, a relative, a coworker, will come to visit the congregation family. So if you have a prayer request, this bottom portion right here, you can uh, put your prayer request. You don't need to put your name. Just put who you're believing and praying for that will come to the congregation family and immediately 
after service or when service closes, we're going to invite you to walk them up and drop them right in there with all the other cards that are there. And we're praying over those cards as a staff each and every week. So if you have not had a chance to do that, you can do so today and drop it in the basket immediately after service. And a lot of you guys don't know, we have midweek services. What's a midweek service, Joseph? Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have a midweek congregation service. You can find that on our website. You can find that on Facebook. And you can find that on YouTube. And uh, I just found out that Pastor Tim is going to be featured all month long for our midweek services. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. So tune in live. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. is our midweek service, guys. Facebook, YouTube, and the website. I just wanted to remind you guys, because honestly, we hear a lot of people don't even know that we have a midweek service. So I'm reminding you today, and those of you who are online, tune in Wednesday as well. And uh, my last announcement, Kelly, actually involves somebody that you know very well. What's going on, Joseph? Pastor Tim. I sent Pastor Stefan a text message on Friday. and I Tell said, me about it. I said, happy birthday. But it didn't stop there. I sent him a picture of him and I eight years ago. And I said, when we used to look like kids. And he responded back and he goes, you are so hilarious. Because eight years ago, Tim, we both looked phenomenal. But I'd like to say we still look phenomenal. There's today. no doubt about it. You guys look phenomenal. So you're trying to tell me that it's his birthday week. Birthday week, but Kelly may say month. She may trump us. But Pastor Stefan's birthday, you guys, was on Friday the 18th. I want to make sure I get that date right. Friday the 18th, and we are going to celebrate him this morning at the congregation family. And we have a cake coming out. So proud of him. What an amazing person. What an amazing pastor. Let's give a big clap for Pastor Stefan. Kelly, we need your help. The, the traditional happy birthday. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Ladies and gentlemen. Happy birthday to you. The candles are still burning. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Stefan. Happy birthday to you. What does the five symbolize, Tim? 25? Yes. Can't do it. Trick candles, you guys. Hold on. They're back on. All right, so uh, one more clap, Pastor Stefan. Happy birthday. Just tell us a little bit how you feel at this young age of whatever you are. <laughs> 33. Oh, man, I'm just happy to be alive. I'm happy to be serving. I'm happy to be learning. I just, I rhymed not even on purpose. Uh, but honestly, guys, it's, it's, thank you for celebrating me, but what a privilege it is to be a pastor at this church and, uh, and to partner with you guys really to build God's kingdom. Yes. So, amen. And thank you to your father who's watching and your mother who will watch. Yeah, exactly. Yes, thank you for th to them. They birthed you. <laughs> <laughs> and grandma who, who trained you to be tough. <laughs> 100%. All right. Happy birthday, Pastor <laughs> Stefan. You're going to do tithes and offerings. And he's thank doing you. the tithe and offering. Pastor Stefan. Thanks, guys. I get the privilege of doing the tithes and offering this morning. I'm actually super excited because Pastor Tim is preaching uh, the message today. And, and uh, we have this new system where, uh, where the way we're planning messages and series is now what we're doing is we're figuring out who's the expert on the topic. Does that make sense? So uh, I was super excited because we picked a topic today. And out of the whole staff, we kind of came together and said, Pastor Tim is the number one expert to speak about this in this series called Power Of. So uh, give him a clap. It's going to be really fantastic today. I'll be over there taking notes. Uh, but I just want to take do this in about four minutes and say what a privilege it is to give and to be a giver. Uh, I would call this church a giving church. Amen. And the reason why we're a giving church is because we're a church where Jesus is the head. You know, this is a conversation I have with a lot of young guys about the church. And one of the things I always say is that we have to remember that the head of the church is Jesus. Like, none of us would be here without Jesus. Like, he came, died, and resurrected. 
He is saving, restoring, and redeeming the world. And so Jesus is the head of the church. And so when Jesus decided to bring his people together, he organized it in a certain way. And so Jesus organized it. And so he brought people together to be a part of the people of God. And so the, the word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which means literally people called together. So someone say, I am a person of God. And so when you said yes to Jesus, what you also said yes to was joining Jesus' people, his family. And so that's what the church is. And so one of the things that we do as people of God is that we give like Jesus has given to us. And so Jesus was generous, therefore we were generous. Right? Jesus gives, therefore we give. Jesus forgives, therefore we forgive. Jesus is a bringer of peace, therefore where his people go, we bring peace. So what Jesus does as the head of the church is what we do in light of who he is. And so that's one of the most amazing things about being a Christian is the opportunity to be a giver and the opportunity to live generously because in God he gives us everything. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a news person, and I watch the news a lot, and uh, I've been following very closely what's happening in Ukraine. And one of the most amazing things out of the tragedy that's happening over there is the amount of giving that's taking place. It's really incredible. There are some towns and cities that don't even have military forces in Ukraine, but it's the actual people that are coming together. And they are donating, and they are supporting, and they are volunteering, and they are helping. And it's such an interesting thing because, you know, when the, the war first started in Ukraine, I felt like the first one or two days, everyone was saying, like, it's a done deal. Remember they were saying that? They would say that all the time. They would say things like, Russia's going to roll in. It's not going to be a fair fight. There's, it's it's going to, the tide of the war is going to happen so quickly. But then three weeks later, the world has been shocked at how Ukraine as a people have come together. And I, I look at that as a Christian and say, that is a testament to what happens when we come together as people. And when we decide to serve, when we decide to give, or when we respond to the things in the world that are bad, we respond with generosity. Amen? It's, a, it's an incredible thing. And so that's where I think... One of the things I've really learned as a, a pastor but also a Christian is that when life has come against me, I have learned to respond with generosity rather than holding what I have. I've really learned this. And so there's been moments where I've been overstretched or there's moments where I was unsure. Or there were moments where I was being challenged in certain areas. And the way that I have learned to respond is to just put my hands up, praise God, and live generously. And that sense of generosity, being able to be generous in unsteady times, what it does is it frees us up. It gives us a power that no institution, no army, no force in the world can take away. Amen? So let's practice generosity today. And so we practice generosity through tithes and offerings. And we say at this church that every person who gives opens up another door for this church to do what God is calling this church to do. And so we exist because this church family comes together every week and we all give towards God's purpose. Amen? And so we are stronger together. And so if you're new to this church or, or you've been coming for a while and, and you've never given before, I challenge you today, be a giver. Join the giving family. And uh, if we all step up and do this together, what happens is God will bless us and we will have an amazing impact in this city and in the world. Amen. So let's give today. Let's just take a minute to do so. There's a few ways to give. One way to give is through a uh, text Congregation Church to 77977. Um, another way to give uh, is congregation.family slash give uh, or through the Congregation Family app. For everyone watching online, definitely take a moment. If you're a member of our online family, which is a lot of you uh, all over the world, thank you for those who are givers. 
Uh, and those, if you've been thinking about it, this would be your Sunday to step out in faith and join the giving family. Uh, and so while we do this, uh, I just want to say uh, just a little bit about this series, The Power Of. If, if, you're, if you haven't uh, heard last Sunday, last Sunday I spoke about the power of Scripture, how to live with the Word of God. Uh, the first Sunday of this month, um, Pastor Paige spoke about the power of worship. So I am super excited about what Pastor Tim is going to show us today and what he's going to teach us and what he's going to pour into us. Amen? So help me out. Help me up, welcome uh, my uncle, Tim Story. Okay, let's stand up. Greetings, you guys. Southern California weather is very nice today. Uh, good to see all of you that are coming in from online. And when I travel on the road, I meet so many of you that are not even of the Christian faith, and you watch us. So thank you for watching us and learning and growing. And we are a church that is only about six years old plus, and we are helping a lot of people. And so we're thankful for what God is doing. Father, thank you so much for our lives. Thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for surrounding us, protecting us, healing us. We pray for the world today. We thank you, Lord, for the safety of Ukraine, that you would turn the tide there in a supernatural way. We thank you, Lord, for peace in Jerusalem as you asked us to pray. Thank you for healing in all of our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So what a privilege it is to share today. Uh, Pastor Page taught on the power of worship. I watched that. It was so, so good. I think it was one of the best that she has taught, actually. Fantastic. Pastor Stefan, on the power of scripture, I love the story when he talks about uh, his dad and, and himself, they were driving in Sweden and they got a flat tire, which I would not have liked, plus it was cold. And then they started knocking on people's doors, <laughs> which you don't do in America, but you can do in Sweden. And the guy brings out a mega light and helps them to find the way. And, and scripture brings light. That was a fantastic message. Today I'm teaching on the power of prayer. This series all goes in sync with the fact that we are living in unsteady times and that we can be steady in unsteady times and that we do not have to become dramatic in the midst of the drama. And so go with me in your Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. You're going to love where I take you today. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Say this, say the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Wow. Say that, say do not be anxious about anything. Okay, so what are we allowed to be anxious about? Nothing. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, this is where we're going today, prayer and petition. How many of you the last year have had a situation? Who could spell situation? It's different than situation. I remember two years ago, Dog the Bounty Hunter was going to come to us on Easter. So... Uh, I was negotiating with his manager, even though Dog and I are best friends. Uh, I did his wedding for him and Beth. I did the funeral for his daughter. I did the funeral for Beth. I was there before Dog had a show, Dog the Bounty Hunter, that ended up going about 13 seasons. And so uh, I was talking to his uh, manager, who's quite famous. She's also Brad Pitt's manager. And she says, now, Tim, make sure that you get him a refundable ticket because there might be a problem with this thing they're calling COVID. It's two years ago. Come on, people. And I said, no, I think we're going to be okay. And she says, no, no, I'm hearing from some people. This is two years ago. There may be a problem with this thing called COVID. How many of you know we had a problem with this thing called COVID? Just lift your hands. That's called a situation. What's happening in Ukraine 
is a big situation. But in the middle of a small situation, a middle situation, or a big situation, God says in his word, do not be anxious. Or as T.D. Jake says, thou shall not sweat it. Say that. Say thou shall not sweat it. That's the 11th commandment. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, Tim's story, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Wow, wow, wow. He wants me to pray, and then I'm in a situation, and he also wants me to come in with thanksgiving. So I've had about 10 days to really work on this text. And one of the things that the Apostle Paul is saying is that no matter what it looks like, you have to see on the other side of what it looks like. You know how powerful that is. No matter how it looks like, you have to look on the other side of what it looks like. If you get diagnosed with cancer, you got to look on the other side of what it looks like. If your child is having trouble, you got to look on the other side of what it looks like. And you step in to pray with praise. You step into pray with thanksgiving, believing that God is already performing a miracle. See, Or Roberts used to say that miracles are either coming or going at all times. So in the natural, your situation, your situation can look dire. In, this, in the natural, your situation can look like, man, what's going to happen to the economy? Look what's happening with gas prices. But in God's situation, in God's perspective, God is already working miracles. So do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. He says, if you come in with thanksgiving, if you pray, when you petition, a peace will come that is supernatural. So I was doing some studying on this because I have a new app out called the, the Mind Me app, the Mind Me app, that you could actually get that, and I walk people through, uh, you know, being still, etc. And also, the, the number one app in the world right now is an app called Calm, C-A-L-M. And I would say even a lot of you that are watching or here that, that have it. And one of the reasons for these apps is because people are looking for comfort. So here's what this app says it will do. It will improve the quality of your sleep, the Calm app. It will improve your focus. Okay? It will help you to find rest. Sounds like Philippians. <laughs> so, so the Apostle Paul was writing this before the Calm app. You have to understand, Paul is in prison. He's sitting in a very tight prison, and he's saying, hey, guys, when you come to God, you have to just know that God answers prayers. And in any situation, come in with thanksgiving. The guy's in prison. He's not writing this from the Bahamas. Somebody wave like you're here. He's in prison. My point is, you can be in a tough place and be thinking big thoughts. You could be in a bad situation and still be thinking about miracles. So he says this. He says, come to God this way and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Somebody asked me the other day, I was on the road, they said, do you stay in this state of mind all the time? Because every time I see you, you seem happy. I said, now I'm challenged. I'm definitely, I'm definitely challenged, but I don't change even if I'm challenged. Why? Because I, I, I stay in the word of God. I have to. The Bible says, blessed is a person who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the path of the sinner. But in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. That's, that's firm. 
planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In the midst of unsteady times, we can come to God in prayer and find strength. So, it's very, very interesting. What is prayer? It is petition. It is simply communication. And it is fellowship. Say these words. Say petition, communication, fellowship. When I was in college, there was a guy by the name of Dan. And Dan had seen me at a meeting of a well-known minister. And he saw that well-known minister bring me up. I was only 19, 20 years of age. I was going to college at the time. And Dan saw me and later in campus he says he says hey Tim Story Dan was from North Carolina he said God has big plans for you but don't forget your strength is going to come from being on your knees you got to get on your knees he said when you learn to get on your knees he says you'll beat the devil every time I'll never forget what he said when you get on your knees you'll beat the devil every time so those words stuck in my mind and so I'd see him around campus, and he'd go like this. He'd go like this. That, that, he didn't even say anything. That meant. So I came up to him because Dan was 10 years older than me. He had gone through things in life and then came back to college. And I said, Dan, do you pray? He says, I pray all the time. I, I pray in the practice room where they practice piano. And I do that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 10 o'clock at night. And I said, can I come? He said, absolutely. My God, that guy changed my life. Because we started praying for an hour. But let me admit something. After about 12 minutes the first time, I ran out of things to say. Come on, people. <laughs> and, and then I got better on Wednesday night. And I think I went like 14 minutes and I ran out of things to say. And I thought, I, I'm going I'm to watch how this guy does it. <laughs> so he started thanking God and worshiping God, as Pastor Page would say. And then he was quoting scriptures that Pastor Stefan taught on. And, and I was just watching how this guy did it. And, and the, the more I stayed in prayer with him, the hour would end, and I was longing for more time. Because I went from petition, communication, into fellowship. Have you ever had a long lunch and you wish it was longer? Do you know that sometimes I'm sitting next to somebody on an airplane and they're so interesting that I don't want the plane to land yet? It's happened. Same thing with God. How awesome would it be if you could move into a prayer time that it's not just petition of God I need, God I want, but it's actually communication that leads to fellowship. So we're talking about the power, the power of prayer today. So what is power? Power is this. It means to be able. It means the ability to act or produce an effect. Say this. Say God is able. It also means the ability, again, to act or produce an effect. So God is powerful. God produces effects. What do I expect for your March? God effects. <laughs> what do I expect for April? God effects. What do I expect for your May? God effects. What do I expect for your June? God effects. That's why I have that term world shaker. A world shaker is a person who is used to bring God effects wherever they go. Wow, wow, wow. So the apostle Paul is saying, hey, guys, listen to this. When you pray, when you pray, it's going to bring God effects. In fact, in James chapter 5, in verse 16, you don't have to turn there. It says this, famous scripture, the effectual Fervent prayer of a righteous person avails what? Say it in Spanish. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails mucho. Look at me. The effectual fervent prayer of righteous people avails much. The word effectual means efficient and effective. Have you noticed that when you're in a tough situation, you have 
effective prayers. When you're in a tough situation, come on, you are praying fervently. So this whole idea of to be fervent means with intensity, with feeling. It literally in the Greek, it means hot, hot prayers. When was the last time you prayed a hot prayer? We just had a conference recently, and we had the guy that created the hot Cheetos. Who's ever had hot Cheetos once? Lift your hands. Some of you know him. He's from this area. He made a lot of money. He created hot Cheetos. This guy created hot Cheetos. You, people are eating hot Cheetos, but they're not doing hot prayers. You got to have a hot prayer. When was the last time you had a hot prayer? When I was younger, I used to have such hot prayers, I'd scare people. You've heard this story that I used to pray and I'd say, God, if you're not going to use me, then kill me. And we were at my mother's house doing a Bible study. I'd see people walking like this. like That's a hot prayer, Manny. Did you mean it, Tim Story? I did. And no wonder I'm Tim Story. I was praying hot prayers, people. I was praying, God, use me. Thank you for my life. Strip anything from me that's not of you. I'm not kidding. I used to get stripped of things that were not of him. I remember when that one girl broke up with me when I was 19, and I was so sad. Come on, people. That's what I get for praying hot prayers, Joseph. (laughs) Say this, say. The effectual, fervent prayer. Of God's righteous avails much. Say much is coming to my life. Clap your hands like much is coming. Come on. Come on. Come on, act like prayer works. Prayer, petition, communication, fellowship. Jesus taught on hot prayers in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Don't turn and just hear it. He he taught on hot prayers. He said, when you pray, this is how you pray. When you pray, this is how you pray. It was always hot prayers. You got to pray some hot prayers. Pray like your back is against the wall, even when it's not. I don't feel like my back's against the wall right now in this season of my life. I'm living in a season of prosperity, even though so many people are living in pain. So I'm now thinking more and more how I can help more people. I'm praying hot prayers to help human beings. I went to Nordstrom's just to buy something yesterday, and, and I was working on people, talking to this one young guy that just moved in from another city, and I was talking to his life. This morning, I already prayed for him. I'm already praying hot prayers for the Nordstrom's kid. Why? Why? Because hot prayers work. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous person avails much. Wow. This is the power series. Power, again, means to be able. The ability to act or produce an effect. You are not just going to go through life. You're going to live your life, but you're going to do it with a lot of effect. All right? So, go down. Philippians chapter 4, go to verse 10. I rejoice greatly in the Lord, and at last you renewed your concern for me. And indeed you were concerned that you had no opportunity to show it. Okay, go all the way down now to verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me, you got to finish it. I can do all things through Christ who gives me. I can do all. (laughs) So for this sermon, I watched my friend Francis Chan speak on this. Then I also watched, because I like to give credit, T.D. Jakes speak on this. Then I also watched Chuck Smith teach on this. I watched a whole sermon from each one of them because I wanted to see how they went after this whole subject of Philippians chapter 4. So the Apostle Paul says, hey, I'm in prison, but I want to give you guys some tips here. Is that no matter what you're going through, come into God and pray. Come into God and pray, but come in with thanksgiving. And when you come in with thanksgiving, your prayers are going to be answered. And and it's going to give you a peace that transcends what the world is spitting at you. 
Because the world's spitting a lot of stuff. Is it the end of the world? Is it, is, are we going into World War III? Are we going to be nuked? Uh, is it, are we at the mark of the beast? So I was praying to God the other day because me and God are really good friends, if you guys didn't know that. And I said, God, wherever where we are, just show me what to do. Show me what to do. Show me where to be. Show me how to help people. Show me how to live. Show me how to respond. Show me how to act because you're still my father. You're the potter and I'm the clay and you're shaping me and molding me in this fallen world. You know how powerful this is? Because the world's going to be telling you a lot of things. They're going to try to shake you back and forth. But Paul's in prison. The context, I write in my notes, he's in prison. He's been there for a while. But then he goes on to say, he says, I have learned to be content. The guy's in prison. How come we have not learned to be content in this culture? Why are we so finicky that if the waiter or waitress is just a little bit late, come on, people. If Domino's Pizza doesn't do it within the time you thought, is it time to get it free? I was with some friends because I'm not a big pizza eater. And this guy ordered pizza, and this is a true story. His seven-year-old daughter said, is it time to get it free? Because I guess that's what happens a lot. Like, if the person was late, then they would try to get it for free, yet the guy's rich. Come on, people. I've learned to be content. Say this. Say, I have learned to be content. Wow, wow, wow. How many of you want to be content? The word content means fulfillment, peace, tranquility. My friend B.B. Winans, if you're watching today, B.B. Winans said to me one time, he goes, Tim, are you on medication? I go, no. He goes, you're too peaceful, man. Are you sure you're okay? (laughs) This is a true story. I called my sister Paige one day and I said, Paige, I have so much peace, it's weird. I'm hoping I don't die. Come on, people. Because so many of us have been raised in such drama. Wow. If there's not any drama, we want to start some. If there's no fires, we want to start fires. If there's nothing tricky going on in your mind, you start creating something tricky. But you better get ready for the God of peace (laughs) to come into your mind and to come into your spirit in turbulent times, because somebody needs to be the compass, somebody needs to be the wise person, somebody needs to be the person that knows the way out, you better clap your hands. Somebody that needs to be the one that makes their way through in your family. Who's going to be the one that has some peace inside of them? He talks about contentment in this scripture, fulfillment, comfort, well-being, peace, tranquility, He says, I can do all things through Christ. It is a raw, raw scripture, but you have to put it in context. First, he's talking about prayer. He's talking about thanksgiving. And then he says, you can do all things. When you pray and you move into God's rest, then you can do all things. Everything is in Christ, through Christ, in Christ, through Christ, in Christ, through Christ. You can't be outside of that and say, I can do all things. No, because now it's on you. You can do. You can only do so much. You got to be in and through, in and through. Prayer, scripture, worship will help you to be in your power zone in and through. That's why Christ never stayed in the battleground. He always ran to the holy ground. He went to pray. The Bible says, and he went to a solitary place to pray. Why? Even Christ needed to be fueled up. Even Christ needed to be aligned with the Father's mission so he could have the strength to do all things in God. Clap your hands like you're catching this. It's powerful stuff, huh? Just take it in. It's powerful stuff. Even Christ did not stay in the battleground. He went to the holy ground. So that's why I don't answer everybody's call. Because I got a stake. 
in the holy ground. Why did I tell you I just came home and yet you're still calling me? I said, okay, I'm going to see my mother today, but somebody did, did they just keep calling. Call. What they're saying is, my urgent is, is, is more important than your rest. I disagree. So good, my gosh. I'm on fire today. You better protect yourself. You better, you better protect your holy ground experience. Jesus went to the, to the battleground, the battleground, the battleground, then the holy ground. The battleground, you, you, you better cow gone, take yourself away. So Paul really says to us, number one, I find contentment in Christ. Number two, he says, I found my purpose in Christ. Wow, wow, wow. Number three, he says, I found power in Christ. When he says purpose, he means his reason, his cause, his intention, his desire, his ambition. I have muted so many people on social media. I don't get them off completely because some of them are my friends, but me and Joseph mute them. And none of you are here physically, so I'm not talking about you. It's some of you. Because why are you acting silly when we're living in such tough times? You got to know the tone of a space. Wow. If you're a jokester, you better feel what that table's like if they're telling jokes. You may need to hold your jokes, Leroy. You got to feel the tone. There's a tone in this world. Now, should you still be yourself and dynamic and humorous and strong? Yes, you should be living. But at the same time, we got a lot of people struggling, dying, trying to find their way. Don't you think it's time that we go after God with everything we have and really align ourselves with purpose? I have a friend named Edgar Papke. He wrote a book called The Book, The, the True, True Alignment. The book is called True Alignment by Edgar Papke. He is the phenom in the area of the subject of alignment. We work together on projects. He says this, without true alignment, you will have a different intention than your leader or your boss. Wow. Prayer brings me into alignment. Otherwise, I go crazy out in this world that I'm in. I'm out in this world of super motivator. Oh, my gosh, you're so motivational. Oh, my God. Mr. Dream come true. We want you to do that. We want you. We want you. I'm, I'm, people try to pull me all these places. In fact, they always try to tell me, why do you have to be at church on Sunday? Why do you have to be at church on Sunday? Why are you always talking about scriptures? Why, you know that probably offends some people that you talk about scriptures? Let me tell you something. For I am not ashamed. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How, how can we deny a Jesus that set you free? So powerful, Tim's story. Go ahead, buddy. We're so proud of you. Watch this. Prayer, prayer brings contentment. It brings your purpose, your reason, your cause, your intention, your desire, your ambition. Right? Watch this quote. Prayer will bring contentment, show you your purpose, and then empower you for your purpose. God is empowering you for something greater than you see. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, as T.D. Jake says. You better get ready, get ready, get ready. Because why am I feeling all this? Because God is trying to empower you for your purpose. Why is God doing this? Because he's empowering you for your purpose. God is getting you ready for something big. Clap your hands and shout. He empowers for a purpose. Say that. Say he empowers. For purpose. So you're going you're gonna to notice in your life, God's going to start calling you to himself. How does he do that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just starts telling you, you, you should pray. 
you should pray. You, you'll be driving. You turn off the radio, whatever you have on. You should pray. You're in the shower. You should pray. You're in the bath. You should pray. You're cooking. You should pray. You're vacuuming. You should pray. 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 This is what I've been feeling a lot. You should pray. You should pray. You should pray. Why? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. You say, I feel like my life's not going anywhere. Oh, it's going somewhere. You're availing much out there. Wow, wow, wow. Could, could you imagine in, in a world where they're banking on the metaverse and all these other things that we're afraid to bank on what God is speaking to us in his word. That the effectual, fervent prayer of you, his righteous. What does that mean, that I'm righteous? You're in right standing with Christ. In my notes, it says, Jesus was made sin for you, who knew no sin, that you might become righteous. You're not a normal human being. You have Christ on your inside and Christ on your outside. You're getting double fire. Fire from the inside, fire from the outside. People say, why do you look so explosive? Because I'm walking dynamite. Sorry, trying to tone myself down. Only been in the ministry 41 years. I'm trying to tone myself down, but I'm double dynamite. I got dynamite on my inside, dynamite on my outside, dynamite in the church, dynamite in the holy heavenlies. I got dynamite everywhere I go. I'm walking dynamite. Sorry, I'm trying to tone myself down. I had a pastor in Chicago tell me, here's a church of 3,000. I went and spoke for him when I was 27, and I speak real hard like this. He said, I tell you what, young preacher, he says, you'll preach like this for maybe three years. He says, but you'll, 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 you'll lose all that en energy. You'll see. Haven't lost it yet, 41 years later in the ministry. Haven't lost it because I'm walking dynamite. Don't get mad. Don't get jealous. Come on, mijo. I'm walking dynamite. I didn't say Napoleon dynamite. And so are you. You're walking dynamite. You, you're walking power. That's why you come in and people say, there comes an answer to prayer because you're walking dynamite. And you, you, you come into a situation and you say, okay, what do I need to do? What do, I, do I need to move something in the spirit? Do I need to make something happen? Do I need to drop some money on something? Do I need to help somebody? I was, I was walking through uh, South by Southwest and all these people were wearing hats like they do at South by Southwest. Kind of like a Coachella kind of vibe. And I was walking through and I saw this homeless man on the street. And I, I talked to him. I said, come here. I said, how long have you been homeless? He said, six months. I said, but you look very clear. He goes, yeah. He says, you know, I'm homeless. I lost my job and this and that and that and that. So I said, let me tell you something. I'm a minister. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to zap you. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, don't do that. I go, no, no, I'm going to zap you. It's going to feel like an elect electrocution. I said, because you have problems with your back and your hip. So I'm going to zap it out. He goes like this. Whoa. He goes, how do you know I have problems with my back and hip? I said, yes, you do, because I'm getting that. I'm downloading from God. He goes, yeah, I sleep, sleep on the streets, and it's messed up my back. I said, well, I'm going to zap it out of you. And he goes, whoa, don't zap anything. I go, and I went, zzz, 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 zzz. I zapped him. <laughs> Why? Because I wanted to. We're Christ's ambassadors, humans. <laughs> and then I went into my backpack, and I gave him $100. Say, so here's 100 for blessing you for your birthday. He goes, whoa, how'd you know it was my birthday? I said, well, when was it? He goes, not today. It was last week. I said, well, I'm late. <laughs> and here's $20 to eat. So that's 120 How often do you do that? All the time. No, because I got dynamite on my inside, dynamite on my outside. We are a <laughs> Almost done. We're ants. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> We're, we are answers to prayer. Start acting like you're an answer to prayer. I'm done speaking. Clap your hands if you learned something. Everybody stand. Say this. Say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. 
To all you watching online, you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. No matter what you're facing today, you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. Those of you that are here, we can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. Somebody say this. Say, Jesus, give me the strength to do all things. Wow. Just lift your hands. Lift both hands. Say, dear Jesus, come into my life in a new and special way. Bring me fire on my inside and fire on my outside. Close your eyes. Stay in that power. All you that are watching online, God's empowering you. We can stay steady in unsteady times. your hands for one minute say thank you God for what you're doing in my life that peace thank you God just say thank you God for mighty works that are happening in my life for mighty works that are happening in this world say God bring this world miracles I want you to look here you see by us just talking about God how he shows up so strong it's very strong guys so I'm going to close with this scripture. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you desires of your heart. The word desire means your wishes, your passions, what you will. But the reason the writer can write that is because what he's basically saying is, if you get so close to God and communion with him, you will not want to have selfish desires. Come on, wave at me. I have a friend who's happily married. 
a guy, and he's a guy that I work with in another job. And he's constantly texting his wife to check on her. And I said to him, how long have you been married? He said, 13 years. It's not like it's year one, but they're so connected. Come on, people. And then I went over to their house for lunch. She's serving him, and he's serving her. I'm like, they're almost out serving each other. <laughs> they're in communication. Wouldn't you want to be in such communication with you? <laughs> that you say, it's not about me in 2022 or 2023 or 2024 or 2025. What a great life you have living that way. I want to challenge you that are watching, if you did not have a chance to give earlier because some of you come on later, help us as a church. We're a young church. We're a feisty church. We're a combative church, helping people, changing lives. About one in three churches shut down during the pandemic. One in three. I've been going to cer certain churches all my life. Some of them are now shut down because of the pandemic and them losing so much money. Many of them have gigantic buildings and could not pay for them. So thank you guys for helping us to rally. All the information is there to give, but help us out as a young church who is making an impact in people's lives. Some of the congregation, clap your hands. Come on, we're in this together. So thank you guys for helping us, okay? I'm going to pray a prayer, and Pastor Stefan's going to come and officially close. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. As we often say, we may not be what we want to be, but thank you, God, we're not what we used to be. Thank you for this power series that you are helping us to be empowered that we could power through. And everybody said, amen. Give Pastor Stefan a big clap as he closes. That was ridiculously good. <laughs> well, I had to Let's... step up my game because I saw what Paige did and I saw what you did, so I had to step it up. I, lo I love it. Give, give Tim another clap. That was fantastic. I am so inspired. Uh, join us next week uh, as we do the final uh, message of this series, uh, and the topic is going to be the power of fellowship. And so I'm super excited about it. I'm, I get the privilege of being able to preach to round this, um, uh, this series out. So you do not want to miss it. Uh, so I encourage you to be, uh, be there next Sunday. And, uh, man, let's be answers to prayer this week. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Hello, it's Tim Story. I hope you enjoyed the service. If so, subscribe. If not, still subscribe. It's good.